all sing, Bless the Lord, O my soul.
funeral on behalf of Elder Johnson, myself, and all the officers and members of this church. We will have a blessed Sabbath day. And we just had someone come in that uh, I don't recognize, so welcome. And we're very glad that you are worshiping with us today. I hope you signed our guest book. Thank you so much. Okay. And be blessed and enjoy the service today. And please now stand and sing our opening hymn, number 92. This is my father's world. Each other. 
it's a very, very good thing. So at this moment, we're going to ask anyone with any spoken request. We can verbalize it at this time as we petition the Lord's prayer. She was telling me that her husband fell down from upstairs, the stairs, and he punctured his lung, and he's not doing well, and he's in the Stony Brook Hospital. His name is Stuart. Unspoken request. Lord, see it in the hands of our. Coming up before you this morning, 
I ask of you, Almighty God, to forgive, to forgive me so that my prayer can come up before you. That the prayer of your people may be able to ascend before your throne. We gather here each king, Almighty God, not because we want to, but because it is your word and your following your precepts together into your house. And you have promised that we are any we are two or three is together touching anything concerning you. You will be in the midst of bless. And we are more than three. So we, Almighty God, we ask this moment for your special blessing upon each and everyone here this morning. We are, so our faces are different, so are our needs. We cannot pray for ourselves. Oh, Father God, you will. You pray for your disciples. So we are praying for each other this morning. We are lifting up each other as a show of unity oh, for our congregation this morning. Sister Reed is asking for prayer for herself and for sister. She's been ailing on my father. So we ask of you to send a comforting spirit to comfort you. If she's feeling pain at this moment, to rid her of the pain. And most of all, Father God, to allow her to hold on. Hold on to your steadfast hands. Oh, Father God. Camilla's asking for pride for her brother who's suffering from cancer. Father God, you are the balm in him. You are the great physician. And when men has have passed us down, it is not over until you, Father God, say over. So if it's your will, dear Father God, I ask of you that you will intervene in his life. And if he's not a believer, at the end of it all, may he be able to testify that the doctor couldn't have done it. But only you, Almighty God, Amen. that your name will be glorified. Yes. Yes. We thank you for coming to ask of prayer and know that you, God, everything is possible. Yes. So we thank you. And we ask for a blessing upon her and her family as well. Yes. Almighty God. Sister Shirley is asking for prayer for, pray for Franklin. Yes. You don't know the circumstances. But you know, O oh Father. So we are placing him before you. Yes. Sister, Re Sister Teresa is asking for prayer. For her sister. Sister Emily. Sister Brown. You, you, you heard it, Father. You heard it. Intervene in your own sweet time. Intervene in your own sweet time, Father God, and de bring deliverance yes. if it's yours. No matter. And the block of this out today. But we give thanks, Father God, because you have done his surgery. And no matter how simple the mistake could have been made, yes. but you have kept the hands of the surgeon yes. steady. Yes. Then man focus and his own recuperating. Yes. We ask of you, Father God, that you continue to bless him yes. and to Amen. give him the strength and may he he will always testify of you but, but now we have even more a deeper testimony because father god he sees where you have led him yes. and continue to lead him and his family mm -hmm. and bring him back safely to us oh father god sister maris and his family is struggling because of death in the family we ask for journey and mercy for you. Death is the enemy of the soul. Yes. But Father God, we know that if we put our trust and our confidence and abide within your word, that death will be crushed at the final day. Yes. And that we, Almighty God, will ascend and to live with you where death will be no more a part of our journey. Amen. Father, we wait for you, Almighty God, to continue to Give us a strength each day. Hold on to our hands, Almighty God. Because we are too feeble to hold on to yours. Yes, Amen. Yesterday there was an outcry. And many are frustrated. Many are becoming fearful. Monday is going to be an eclipse. Many people have become fearful 
But we know because we are a scripture people. We know that all these are the signs of the time. Yes. And you are promising that there is one but one sign and then you will come. And it is a when your gospel is preached in all the world and everyone has the opportunity yes. to repent. Only then will the end come. Amen. So let us be faithful, Father God. Let us be faithful to this. Today I lift up the man's servant and the dance before you. Father God, you have used him in the past, wanted to use him today. Continue to build a head around him and his family. And may he continue to shine in this part of the vineyard. You have sent, you have sent him to us, and by that, your grace, we continue to hold him close. It's because he is strength in them. May as he speak today, his word may resonate with someone. And if we've given the drive to walk closer or even to share the word with someone else. Thank you for all of us here today. Thank you, Father God. And we ask that you to forgive us of the many sins that we have committed. No, 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 no. Yes. And if there is anything that is plaguing any one of us in our lives that we are we are very mindful of. We don't want to be publicized. Father God, you know, intervene. Help us to overcome. I ask his mercy in your son's name. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. And be with us throughout this day and forevermore. I ask his mercy in your son's name. In precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Shall we say the amen again? Amen. amen. Signs of the times. Everywhere. And you feeling in the air. The song continues. Keep your eyes. Your eyes on the eastern sky. Lift up your heads. Your redemption draws near. I want to thank Brother Jones for his ministry. Time and time again, he has blessed us here. And his delivery today, along with Sister Shirley, has been most fitting. You know what I like about Brother Jones is that 
is available at a moment's notice. Amen. I texted him last night and I asked him, I said, I'm going to be delivering the word on Sabbath morning. Uh, Brother Jones, can you help me out? And his response was, okay, I'll do it. And I was at peace. Amen. Thank God for people like him. Amen. His ministry, his reliability, and his love for the gospel and for God himself. I want to thank God also for my wife who read the scripture reading this morning. Amen. I thank you, dear, for being by my side. For being that spot where I can run to at times when I feel weak. I thank God for you. I want to welcome everyone, my visiting friends. Those online, I want to welcome you also. My topic today is it won't be long. It won't be long. In reviewing the scripture taken from 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 13 and 14, reading it from the, the, the New American Standard Version, I think my wife, she read it from the New King James Version, it says, but according to his promise, I want to pause there. He has never reneged. He has never gone back on his promises. He has never gone back on his promises. His words do not go back to him void. But according to his promise, we now it's addressing us. We are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, Yesterday, April 5, there was an earthquake. Felt in New York, Connecticut, parts of Connecticut, Philadelphia, Boston, New Jersey. Yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry. And some of us right here didn't even feel it. <laughs> yes. I was in my office and I started to see my monitors dancing. 
I felt my seat just shake. I said, yes, this is one of them. I don't know what's going on with this mic. Uh, let's see if I can change it. Thank you very much. Probably can turn that one off. Okay. Yes, I felt it too. They said the epicenter was was in a place uh, west of New Jersey near White House Station in Huntington County in New Jersey. Uh, this occurrence, it found itself in the history books. Did you know that? It found itself in the history books. Yes, it wasn't an ordinary earthquake. Yes, it was 4.8. And by, by the, the United States Geological Survey, it's, it's, a, it's a small earthquake, but it still found its way in the history books. Here is the historical data. This magnitude 4.8 earthquake has been the strongest in New Jersey in 240 years. Wow. 240 years. So, many generations have passed and have, and have never felt an earthquake. So I'm certain it must have jolted a few people scared of you people, and I'm not here to scare you. I'm not here to scare you one bit. I'm just here to bring a few things to your attention. I checked the headlines. CNN said, rare 4.8 magnitude quake rattles the Northeast. NBC News says, earthquake hits the East Coast rattling buildings in uh, New York City, Philadelphia, and Boston. Fox 5 News says a 4.8 magnitude earthquake shook New York City and the tri-state area Friday morning. Associated Press, an earthquake centered between New York City and Philadelphia rattles much of the Northeast. And ABC, ABC said New Jersey, New York City, Rocked by rare 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Yes, rare. Rare, but not strange. Especially to God's people. Knowing the signs of his coming. That earthquakes will be part of the signs. My brothers and sisters, he said it. To his disciples, what are the signs of your coming? And he outlined them, one after the other. Well, two days before this earthquake, there was another earthquake. Absolutely. 7.4. This now is a huge earthquake. Toppling buildings, trapping people, causing rock slides, and all kind of things were happening there. Lives were lost too. Here's another fact. According to the United States Ge Geological Survey between Friday, March 29 at 4.48 p.m. and Friday, April 5, 3.32 p.m., that is eight days, 
there were 309 earthquakes worldwide. Not because you are not there when everyone is happening doesn't mean that it's not happening. I don't want you to ignore the signs. The signs are getting clearer and clearer and clearer and more rapidly and more rapidly and more rapidly. To wake up. Yes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to give you thanks, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for this moment. Lord, I can speak to your people not with my words, but making myself available as the conduit, as the vessel, vessel to transport your words to their ears and their hearts. Lord God, I ask you to remove me, and Lord, you stand in my place. I ask God that you will remove everything that is self from me, me Lord, and prepare me now, Lord, make me ready, Lord, to deliver your word. Words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 The news gets more and more desperate with each passing day. There are wars and more wars, famines, superstorms, floods, crimes, sicknesses, strange diseases. In death. The Apostle Paul describes it deeply and expounds comprehensively in Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 22 to 25. I'm going to be reading that from the New Living Translation. I love this translation because it makes it so clear and so practical. I'm going to take time to read it to you. For we know that all creation has been groaning. Groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believers also groan. Even though we have the Holy Spirit within us, as a foretaste of future glory, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will come, will give us our uh, full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies. He has promised us. 24. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. Isn't that right? Yes. If you already have something, what is there to hope for? So we don't hope, we, we don't have that body yet, so we're hoping for it. We don't have that new creation yet. So we are hoping for it. I'm talking about the new heaven and the new earth. Amen. 25 and last says, but if we look forward, but if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. You know, the Christian and the creation, they share two things in common. They groan together. I want to say that one more time. The Christian <coughs> and creation, they have two things.
things in common. We groan together. This is not to be confused with childish complaining and grumbling. Talking about the groaning that Christians groan, not, 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 not grumbling and complaining as, as in a childish manner. Like if we don't like uh, sitting on the hard benches inside here, you, com you complain and grumble. If you don't like uh, Sister Emily's dress, you grumble and complain. Sabbath school is too long, you complain and grumble. Mm -hmm. It goes on and on. In fact, this is something which the Apostle Paul obviously condemns by his positive attitude towards his own suffering. The Christian's groaning is related to his new insight into the depth of how far man has fallen. And in the same breath, saddened, saddened by a reality of what the fallen man has lost. But the Christian also being aware of his limitations, both spiritually and physically, looks ahead for the day that will come when he will be emancipated. Amen. Free from all the that all that restricts and destroys. He looks forward to new heavens and new earth. glorious lives. So we wait with great anticipation because it won't be long. Yes, it won't be long. It won't be long, brothers and sisters. It won't be long. Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, along with the apostle Paul, and by inspiration of the Holy Spirit wrote similar words of hope. This is what we all look forward to. This is what we are waiting for. The book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 17 through 24. I like reading these full texts in your hearing. I don't like to skip and jump and hop over them. It's time to take time and go into the Word, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Again, from the New Living Translation, it starts off, Look! Now this is God speaking through Isaiah, an excited God. He says, look, I am creating a, a new heavens and a new earth. And no one will even think about the old one anymore. <laughs> he continues, he says, be glad. Rejoice forever in my creation. And again he says, look, I will create Jerusalem as a place of happiness. Her people will be a source of joy. That's us right here, me and you, brothers and sisters. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and delight in my people at the sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. Amen. What a day that would be, my brothers and sisters. Aren't you looking forward to it? Yes. Yes. 
continues. No longer will babies die when only a few days old. No longer will adults die before they have lived a full life. Real promises, my brothers and sisters. It's no fairy tale. No longer will people be considered old at 100. <laughs> no longer will people be old when they get to 100 years old. But only the cursed will die that young. And of course, it's talking about the people who have been lost. In those days, people will live in the houses they built. It's speaking of what is going to happen then. This is what we're looking forward to, my brothers and sisters. In those days, people will live in the houses they build and eat the fruit of their own vineyard, vineyards, unlike the past. Where invaders will not take your houses and confiscate your vineyards, for my people will live as long as trees. <laughs> God is just so humorous, yet down to earth and real. Yes, my people will live as long as trees. And my chosen ones will have time to enjoy their hard-won gains. Amen. You know, people, especially when you get to my age, you wonder where the time has gone. Amen. <laughs> you know? And uh, based on what's happening around you, you're thinking that, you know, one day I may just die. It's reality. Yes, sir. But God is promising that you will have time to live out and enjoy your hard won gains. They will not work in vain. We will not work in vain. And our children will not be doomed to misfortune. This is the word of God right here, brothers and sisters. This is the God who we serve. This, these are the words he gave to us through the prophet Isaiah. We will not work in vain. Our children will not be doomed to misfortune for they are People blessed by the Lord and their children too will be blessed. 24 and last, it says, I will answer them before they even call me. How much up close, how much more closer and more personal than that can you get? He says, I will answer them before they even call me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. This is where we are going, and this is what we are going to experience. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. All you need to do is just to keep holding on because. It won't be long. God shows Israel through Isaiah how he will embark upon a creation. And this is, and this is uh, that this is as spectacular as his first created days. He was showing Isaiah that what is going to happen in the new creation is going to be as spectacular as what happened in the beginning. Starting with the physical environment of the heavens and the earth, 
which groans under the weight of sin, he will carry out a new creation with such glorious splendor that the memories of the old heavens and the old earth will fade into faint forgetfulness. All of this will be forgotten. For those astronauts that went out there into outer space, who have looked back from space at our big blue marble, that's what it looks like, you know, like a big blue marble. I could not find words to describe its beauty. We wonder how the new heavens will be even more spectacular. Yet, that is God's promise for his new age, his new creation, that is. As the environment for his people, God will recreate his heavens and his earth, that is his new earth, with a beauty unsurpassed. If just one of his promises had failed, watch this, if just one of his promises had failed, we would have reason to doubt Isaiah's vision for the new creation. But thank God, none of his promises have failed. Amen. Amen. But with the assurance that not one of God's promises has ever failed, we can foresee the reality of Isaiah's, Isaiah's vision through the eyes of faith. Amen. I'm not going to keep you long today. In fact, I'm coming very, very close to my conclusion. The late great gospel singer Andre Crouch. He penned these words of hope too, right alongside the Apostle Paul and, and Peter and, 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 and alongside uh, 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 Paul, Peter and Isaiah. And even Jeremiah spoke of, uh, of his coming too. Andre Crouch, he penned a beautiful song. He started out by saying it won't be long. It won't be long, we'll be leaving here. Yeah. It won't be long, we'll be going home. Going home. Yeah. He continues, count. Count the years as months. Count the months as weeks. As weeks. Count the weeks as days. Any day now. We will be going home. I think I want to pause. I think I want to sing a song for you. Amen. 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 Ariana, I know that this is this is a little bit on impromptu. But can you find for me number 33 on that uh, on that media for me, please? We'll be going home. <laughs> um, just let me know. Um, don't play it once you find it. Just, just indicate to me when you found it, please. Just indicate for me when you found it. Number 33. I'm sorry? It's not 33. It's, what do you have? I'm looking for Beulah Land. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. You found it now? Yeah. All right. Sweet Beulah Land. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hold on a moment. Hold on a moment. Hold on a moment. Hold on a moment. Hold on a moment, man. Hold on a moment. Okay. 
Please, can you pray? Thank you. Yes.
Andre Crouch, he continued. He continued with a quote from 1 John chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 3. I'm going to read again for you. He says, See how great a love the Father has given us. See how great a love the Father has given us. That we would be called children of God. And in fact, we are. This is the Apostle John speaking. For this reason, the world does not know us because it did not know him. I love verse 2. Beloved. Beloved. Now we are children of God. And it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him. Amen. I shall see you. When Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he was no longer in a corrupt body. We will be like him. Amen. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, death could not manipulate his body. We will be like him. Yes. When Jesus rose from the dead, he ascended to the Father. In the air. This body cannot tolerate that. But we will be comfortable. Amen. Amen. We will be comfortable. We will be like him. Because we will see him just as he is. And everyone who has his hope set on him purifies himself. Did you get that? Do you have hope in Jesus Christ? Yes. Then you are purified. That's what this is saying. And everyone who has his hope set on him purifies himself just as he is pure. My brothers and sisters, we are beloved children of God. Let no one tell you anything else. You are beloved of God. He gave his life for you. That's not something that is ordinary and should be taken for granted. Again, this is no fairy tale, this is real. It is scientific, it is historic, it is real, it is true that Jesus Christ died and rose from the grave. Because of what we have for Christ, matter of fact, it's because he loved us first. It's not because we loved him. Amen. It is not what we did for him, it's what he did for us. As for the future, we leave it into his hands. Amen. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the future. Because we know who holds the future and he 
He holds our hands. Leave it in his hands and with hope and confidence knowing that the key reality of the future is that his love lasts and our relationship with him also lasts. <coughs> we shall know him there as we walk in his love here. Our motivation towards purity is because of that hope. I'll read that again. Our motivation towards purity is because of that hope Amen. and that blessed assurance. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.
you so much for what you have allowed me to share with your people today. Amen. May each heart that receive your word, Lord, find and hold on to that hope. That hope, Lord, that your coming is near. And that all of this chaos and all of this confusion and all of this pain and all of this suffering will be no more. We look forward to that day, Lord, with great anticipation. Oh God, we just thank you that you have made it possible that we could come back to you. Amen. We sinned, Lord. We, we threw it all away. But Lord God, you made it possible through the sacrifice of your one and only son, Jesus Christ. Lord God, I just ask you, Lord, that you will reconsecrate every single one of us here today. For those in my presence here, Lord, and those who are watching online, I pray, Lord, for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, a fresh anointing on our lives. Dear God, help us to hold on because it won't be long. Give us ears, Lord, that's ready to hear that still small voice. Amid all the chaos and the noise and all of this in this that's happening in this world. Lord, I just ask you to keep us all connected to you. As we get ready now, Lord, to separate one from the other and, Lord, to go through the remaining portion of the week. Lord, take our troubles, Lord, take our everything, our plans, our thoughts, and lead and direct our lives, we pray, and make us ready, make us ready because it won't be long. Peace and other unmentioned verses, I come to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, because we pray, Amen. 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 Amen.